ChannelsTV.com is your most trusted news website using responsive design for a richer user experience. Get the latest information as it happens. Politics, sports, business, entertainment, health, and more. Access our content on all our social media platforms. To access the world, you only need ChannelsTV.com. The news at your fingertips. Businesses around the world are evolving. On Business Incorporated, we track developments from country to country. From emerging markets to developed economies. Let's take you through every detail of every story. Watch Business Incorporated weekdays on channels television. Every day you invite us to your home. Now we invite you to our homepage. Join Channels TV on social media. Hang out with us on Google Plus forward slash Channels Television. Follow us on Twitter at Channels TV. On Instagram forward slash Channels Television. Friend us on Facebook.com forward slash Channels Forum. And don't forget to like our page. That's not all. Subscribe to YouTube.com forward slash Channels Web. Channels TV.com. The news at your fingertips. Welcome back. We're still having in the studios with us uh, General Paul Burrow, who is a special advisor to the President on Niger Delta Affairs. Well, General, you were telling us about this uh, group of people, the, the second group of people, and what they're not happy about. What precisely are they not happy about? What are they agitating for? I really do not know what they're agitating for, because by now, they should have come up to say what they, what, what they want and how they want it to be. But I am saying venting anger on pipelines is not the best approach towards resolving what the issues are and that the government is uh, open to discussions open to dialogue as a way forward towards resolving this important conflict that uh, has been uh, ongoing in niger delta are you confirming to us that in spite of the vice president's comment over the weekend that the government has not changed its stance on dialogue with the niger delta militants government has not changed its stance the government is still open to dialogue as a way forward towards resolving this uh, uh, resource-based conflict. Is there a committee, is there a group that they can meet, you know, in, in private, in public? Because some people also question the sincerity from some of the comments that we read online. Some people say uh, that they, they are questioning the sincerity of the president's aides. Uh, in some instances, they've even gone as far as mentioning names. Have you seen those concerns and what is government doing to address them? You see, there are a group of people who, as far as they're concerned, they must, they must blame individuals or blame institutions as a way forward towards resolving conflict. You see, when you are sincere about resolving a conflict of this nature, resource-based conflict, is a very serious matter. You don't blame. Talk about how to resolve. Be creative as to how to resolve. It's the best way towards resolving this type of conflict because it affects all. Our economy is being affected. What do we do about revamping the economy so that we can move forward as a country? This is the only country we have. If we go out of this country, we become second-class citizens. So we should all put our hands together and be thinking creatively on how to resolve mm. and Gen not to blame. General, last week you, we did hear the president talk. So some people have talked about the political space, that they're asking for their own political space. I don't know if you've been listening to e the Ijo National Congress uh, mm. saying that they're asking for a national space or their, their own political space. Uh, you know. And then last week... Well, it, was, it made the headlines that the president said that the, the unity of this country is non-negotiable. Yeah. And shortly after, we did hear other groups that have been agitating uh, for some amount of... How will I use that word now? I'm looking for the right word to use. But they've been asking for some amount of autonomy. And that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, forcing the president on the comments that the unity of this country is non-negotiable. As a special advisor to the president on Niger Delta affairs, uh, how, how would you ask him to proceed in that particular area? Yes, thank you very much. You see, Nigeria is known as a great country today because we are one. For example, I come from the south south part of the country. I was born in Lagos. I schooled in the north. I've worked everywhere in the country, including out of the country with the UN. I am a complete Nigerian. 
Nigeria is a great country because we have to get it right. We have to live as one to move forward this country. If you leave this country as a second class person, we are together, we should do all we can, all it takes to live as a family and move forward. If we have issues that are better resolved amicably than using coercive means towards resolving them, I strongly believe in Nigeria as a unity and we should move forward as in, that, in that direction. So do many Nigerians, but then, you know, there has been over time this question of, you know, whether or not Nigerians want to, uh, whether or how Nigerians want to live together as it, as it were, you know, and, and that has led to so many conferences, the last being the 2014 national conference that held. And some people are saying that this government is not, doesn't seem to be looking the way of that national conference. It will, be, will it be one of the things that you'll advise the president to look into and see perhaps how he can implement some of the recommendations there? Do you think that it would uh, remedy some of the things that we're beginning to see, especially in terms of agitations around the country, especially from the South-South? Yes, thank you. Agitations are like ambiguities, and you listen to uh, critical issues. What, happening, what is happening in the National Data has to do with issues and we should look at the remote and immediate causes of how to resolve these issues. So uh, we should be strategic enough to get these issues right and ensure that they are resolved amicably and not thinking of breaking or having uh, uh, parts, breaking into various countries of parts. I strongly believe in one unity and one Nigeria. So do many people, I mean, I've just asked you again whether or not, you know, do you think the government should look at the report of the 2014 National Conference? Do you think that will have any impact whatsoever on the agitations from the Niger Delta? Well, yes, I think so. Um, it should be looked at, and then the areas that need to be uh, virgin or should, should be as a way of moving forward as a country, as a unifying country. What do you think the government should be willing to give to the Niger Delta Avengers for them to stop the bombings? Sincerity of purpose, because the basic, uh, the bottom line of what's happening in, in, in Niger Delta has to be job creation, and the government is hell bent on to revamping agriculture as a way forward to moving forward this country. A Greek, a Greek, a Greek is just the way forward. It's not only total dependence on oil. We should be looking at other sectors where we can develop. And the government is helping ensuring that the agri sector is well developed. So if that area uh, is well developed as, it's, as the government has come up with plans on, on that, I think it's a very good way that uh, Avengers should look at and see how uh, they can also uh, tap into it. Individually, collectively, as a, as a country, we should go on agri as a way forward to advance in our country. The government is looking towards agriculture in the Niger Delta in spite of all the pollution there? If it's in pollution, I have said that the government on the 2nd of June, only last month, that uh, the kickstarting of uh, the cleanup started is another way of resolving the conflict. But you see, that can be stalled if the insecurity challenges as, 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 as it's ongoing. So if the area is not having this type of challenges, you will see that we start early and then it will also create room for, for employment. But I'm talking about agri because the government is concerned about agriculture as a way forward for advancement in the country generally. And particularly, I'm very concerned about what is happening in Niger Letter. And I think agriculture is one area that can employ a lot of uh, persons that are job seekers. In, in what areas, I mean, you t I, when I asked you that question about what government was willing to give, you said that they were willing to give sincerity. But what more is government willing to do to show the Niger Delta militants that it does mean well and that, you know, it's not going to deal with them as if they were criminals? Um, what is happening right now is enough. The, the, the president, during the Ramadan period, invited persons from Niger Delta and openly said he is willing to ensure stability in Niger Delta region and that uh, the development of the entire country will, uh, is his concern and that uh, 
is very much concerned about what is happening in the Niger Delta and that the Avengers should also be willing to listen to this uh, dialogue as a way forward towards resolving the conflict. I'm just wondering, you know, in terms of sincerity, yes. uh, in terms of show, in terms of, because we, we do recall that the last time when government did issue this amnesty program, there was initial distrust. A lot of Niger Delta militants did not believe that government was going to live up to its promises, especially considering the bombings that had happened there before. And it took some time before the militants eventually started coming to lay down their arms and ammunition. And, and there was a time window. There was a window in which they had to do that. And governments had to do a lot of, you know, talking through their leaders, talking. There was a lot of outreaches through different, different people uh, to ensure that these militants eventually bought into the program. Yeah. You've talked about how dialogue is one of the uh, uh, options that government is ex exploring. But when you look at how, you know, the comments that we've heard here and there, and even the comments that are coming from the Niger Delta militants themselves, mm -hmm. you have to ask, you know, you know that there is a bridge or that there's a gap that needs to be bridged. What exactly is government doing to ensure that this gap is bridged? Thank you very much. Again, how do you measure sincerity if you yourself do are not sincere? You can't see someone and be doubting the person if you have not opened the corridor for discourse. You see, let's have some sincerity even within ourselves. Don't keep doubting, doubting, doubting. The, the, when the amnesty program started, there were doubts by the ex-agitators that they may not hold. But eventually, they too amazed that it came to pass mm -hmm. and they're all enjoying the benefits of the amnesty program. So it's not good to have a pre-mindset on doubt, open up, and then you say that uh, it will go well. Does government have a committee that is going to be, that is propelling this dialogue that they intend to have with the Niger Delta Avengers, or that they're having currently? Yeah, like I said, it's ongoing, and that's why things, things are calm, because, um, like I said, dialogue is just the only way that we can uh, uh, employ towards resolving this type of uh, resource-based conflict of this nature. It's dialogue. Even the, uh, the, the Avengers themselves to should also make themselves available towards re uh, resolving this conflict as using dialogue as a strategy towards uh, achieving a win-win situation. Well, you say things are calm. There was a bombing on Friday, wasn't there? On Friday? Yes. Well, what, I, what about the bombings? I would never uh, associate myself with such because, like I've always said, it is not the right way to resolving conflict of this nature. It is not the best way to vent anger on pipes. Discuss the issue. If it has to do with law, employ lawyers to resolving the issue. If it has to do with administration, then allow that administratively. I've always talked about that. That is the best way towards resolving issues of this nature. Resource-based conflict the world wide are very sensitive, but it's not venting anger on the pipes that can resolve it because it affects both the environment as well as the economy, which is key and the common factor even for the Avengers. So it's better to resolve this issue amicably than to vent anger on pipes. Mm -hmm. There's no way in the world this is happening. No way, only in Nigeria. So we should stop it and uh, be open towards uh, dialogue as a way to resolve in this conflict. Do you think government is going to have another amnesty program? I do not think so because the program, though succeeding, uh, is very expensive. And with what is happening presently, our economy is uh, not in its right uh, uh, status. So it's not a, an, and it should not be an, an ongoing or sustainable uh, uh, program. The government is doing all it can to ensure that people disarm and then they, they are employed. It's better to gain employment than to wait for an amnesty uh, program. I'm talking about this based on my knowledge of what we're experiencing in the amnesty program right now. It is very difficult to sustain the program. The resources are not just available to sustain this program. So to talk about another amnesty is difficult. Let's be sincere about it. Let's be thinking of how to create jobs. Let able-bodied men and women think of how they can engage in job uh, creation and develop the country than to think of an amnesty program. It's better to work than to think of uh, a program that will be giving you some stipends.
every month. I think it's better and it's more honoring to be employed, to create jobs, and move on in life than to wait for an amnesty program. It's more dignifying. So what will government be willing to, what will government be willing to give uh, if this dialogue is taking place and the militants, of course, will have the agitations and what it is that they feel, you know, they're, they're agitating for, what will government be willing to give to them? Will it just be telling them you have to go and look for jobs? This is not the way to go. It's not going to be preaching to them, is it? Yeah, it's not going to be preaching. That is why there's a 500 billion uh, special intervention fund for job creation as well as uh, opening up in other areas. So these are areas we can catch on. 500 billion Naira intervention fund, intervention fund for the Niger Delta alone? Not only Niger Delta, for the entire country. It's, it's there. It's the domicile in the, uh, uh, the presidency. It's open to all. Can, you can assess it and then and get a lot of information about that by, through, through, the, through the Internet. 500 billion Naira? 500 to, billion, yes. To ensure that people are employed? to ensure job creation. How does government hope to deploy that? Well, the details are contained in, the, in, the, in that portfolio. If you Google into it, you get the details. And uh, it is, it's, it's, it's available for job creation as well as uh, 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 ensuring poverty is alleviated generally in the country. Mm. Uh, General, tell us about the amnesty program. When I, we do know that the president said that you know the amnesty program will have to wind down. What date precisely are we looking at? Everything being equal with the strategy I've come up with, the exit strategy, it should wind up by next December, because I've come up with this strategy whereby uh, every quarter a sizable number between 250 and 500 persons that are captured in the program will exit the program. Just a moment, then we'll take a break now. When we return, we will continue the conversation. To join us again.